Hello, Jessica here at Mindful Motion Physical Therapy. And this morning, I'd like to take an opportunity to talk to you about the best ways to find your body's position when you're doing hands and knees exercises. This question comes up a lot in the clinic. And in fact, it came up last night sitting around on the floor with friends after dinner. And the concern with these friends was some of the cueing that can be confusing when they're in group exercise classes. So for example, um, the cue to pull your shoulders back or the cue to flatten your back or straighten your back, or especially the cue for when you're on your back doing core exercises, um, instructors might say, push your back down to the mat and keep it there. Okay, so we're gonna talk through a couple of checkpoints to make sure that you're in the right position. So first thing is hips should be right under your knees. A lot of times we see people starting here or starting here. So right under the knees, use a mirror for feedback if that's helpful for you. The second thing is um, wrists under shoulders. Um, so nothing here or too wide or too close in. Okay. If this bothers your wrist, you can really quickly and easily roll up the end of your yoga mat or have a yoga blanket ready so that your palms go on the blanket and fingers go down towards the mat. That's an option. Well, if this amount of wrist compression feels a little uncomfortable. So the next thing we look for is the angle of your low back and the angle of your pelvis. Most of the time when I'm checking people here in the clinic, the tendency for being in neutral, what the patient thinks is neutral is actually here. And so if you imagine my butt bones or my sit bones, right now they're facing down towards my heels. And what we really want is those sit bones facing straight back to the wall behind you. Okay, there should be a small curve in your low back. The second thing that I see often is a rib cage that's dropped down too far. So just take your free hand, find the front bottom ribs, and make sure they're just gently pulled up and away from the mat. And it may take a little bit of abdominal activation to do that. Okay, so once you have your pelvis set, okay, pelvis doesn't move adjust the rib cage. The next thing you're going to look at is shoulder blades. So oftentimes I see this or I see this. So we want to gently engage your shoulder blades by pushing down through the mat and really activating in between the shoulder blades without over rounding. Okay, so in the end, you should have a small curve in your low back that dips downward. You should have a small rounded curve in between your shoulder blades. And then the last curve we're concerned about is the curve of the neck. Okay, so we don't want to be here. It's too much curve. We don't want to be here. That's not enough. We want to look just forward of our fingertips um, toward the edge of our mat. The last thing that I'd like to talk about is what we're doing with their elbows. So for me, I have a tendency to hyperextend or lock out my elbows. So we really want to make sure those elbows stay nice and soft um, and a little micro bend there just to protect the shoulder joints. Now, this is a great position then to start working your core exercise. So the goal is that I don't leave neutral. So a lot of times in class, if you're extending your leg back, you might see um, a twist, okay? So really the goal right now is that if I have a tennis ball right here, that tennis ball does not roll off my back. So I inhale, exhale, I maintain my position as I slowly move my arms and legs. This is also some basic concepts to think about for if you are doing a downward dog 
or maybe even similar concepts for when you're lying on your back. There should be a small curve in your low back. We really don't want to flatten this curve or push that down into the mat to do our core exercises. You can look at our other videos on reflexive core and why that's important that you stay in a relatively neutral posture. Hope that's helpful. Thanks.